close enough. Fresh from the uh, getting his hairs cut, man. I'll tell you, nothing makes you feel like you fresher and cleaner than a, than a haircut. You feel like you just lost ten pounds. How y'all doing? Um, just checking in. Beautiful fall day here in Nashville, and I'm telling you, man, it's beautiful out there. Uh, my old buddy, the Horn Swaggler, Sweet Dougie Brown. Let me borrow this. Sweet old jazz master is. I saw him last night at this gig. Um, he's a tech. He takes care of uh, Vince Gill stuff. And Sweet Dougie Brown. He's got an amazing collection of old guitars and amps and stuff. He's an old horn swaggler from way back. I let him take my burst home and try it out overnight. Uh, and he, he loved it. He brought this jazz master and said, check it out for a while, son. But yeah, I had a fun gig last night. Uh, I was in the house band, like I told you, backing up uh, a bunch of people at this Vince Gill honors thing, uh, where they were, what a great crew of people. Um, man, uh, Cheryl Crow was there, Kev Moe, Sting, I got to play behind Sting. Lord, what a what a surreal experience. Uh, uh, man, what a lovely guy. God, he was just amazing. You know, you guys know what a police freak I am a sting fanatic him and Peter Gabriel on my on my Mount Rushmore and uh man it was just great to see him looking amazing sounding amazing he was a lovely guy me and Jed were standing next to each other playing behind him we we're like wow is this really even happening I, re I recorded a little bit of it on my phone and um I can't really put it up until that show airs it, it airs on the 16th so if you guys are sitting around your TV sets on the 16th. Check it out, it's on CMT, it's called Giants. But uh, I'll put up a tiny little one minute clip where, where we're just goofing around at the end of, uh, of a song and uh, I started improv some different changes and he was just goofing around singing over it. Oh man, really fun. Uh, hell, I mean, if you would have told 13 year old Tommy Bukovac as he was sitting in his room listening to Regatta de Blanc, that he'd be up there playing with Sting one day. He would have never believed it, man. Really cool. You know, the journey that playing this guitar has taken me on in this life, I, I stop to think about it sometimes, and I'm just like, wow. It's pretty pretty amazing, you know, just from plunking on this thing, places you go, things you see. Pretty amazing. Never, never, uh, never ceases to amaze. But uh, yeah, there was uh, Chris Stapleton was there. We played behind him. He's awesome. He's an old friend. I've known him for a long time. 
we were texting back and forth last night, and I said to him, you know, God, man, I remember when you used to hang out in my house, neither one of us had a pot to piss in. And now look at us. Um, he's a great guy, too, man. He's a sweet, sweet guy. Um, he came over and looked at my pedal board last night because he's a closet gearhead, too. And then uh, he said, man, what's a cool pedal I should buy? And I said, I said, get one of these, man. I pointed to that. Earthquake or Dispatch Master. I think he would like that, don't you? With his Jazz Master and his Princeton, his Brown Princeton. That's a great atmosphere pedal, you know? But yeah, um, oh shit. What can we talk about? Let's see. Um, uh, man, you know, like, uh, what, 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 I remember when I was a kid, I, I watched this, um, this Jaco Pastorius uh, instructional video. And I know I've mentioned it before on, on the show. Um, it, it really stuck with me and, it, and, and, it, and it's, it's, it struck me when I was a kid because he, he said some amazing things in there. But I was also struck by the desperation of, of like where he was in life at, at the time when he did that. You know, you could feel the he was not in a great place when he did that. And uh, I'm talking about Jaco Pastorius, you know, the greatest bass player that ever lived, you know. Um, but I remember, you know, amidst some of the instructional stuff when he was talking with Jerry Dramat. He made a, a very uh, adamant point about how I think his father might have taught him or something that that you use your fingers in a in a four fret radius, right? And uh, like you know, anything you play in that thing should use the appropriate finger, right? Like this thing is totally out of tune because I just. Right? Everything should be on whatever finger corresponds with that four fret thing. Okay, so, you know, when I'm playing, I think about that a lot. And then people always say things like, you know, you, well, you use your pinky a lot. You know, people are always talking about how my pinky does crazy things. But, you know, I was never one to do things like this. I would never break that four fret thing. See, I, you could do that. A lot of people do it that way, like where they they skip and they'll play with their three power fingers, you know, not use the pinky. See, that's a no-no for me. Like, stuff that I'm doing there, whatever it may be, it's all moving in a four fret thing where, where all the appropriate fingers go with the right fret. See, that makes a lot of sense to me, like, because that's like, you know, I, I have terrible fingering on piano because I'm self-taught, but on guitar, it always made sense to me that, you know, you should have a finger per fret, right? <laughs> Right? And that's a great practice to get into. You know, you shouldn't be, you know, using, uh, you skipping and like leaving this finger out because this finger is your, it's your money finger, right? I'm telling you that little finger. All right. So always be thinking about that. And um, when you practice your scales, if you practice scales, think about that. It's just proper fingering. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because I just came up with this dumb lick that just really is a good example of a, let's see. I mean, that's a silly lick, but it's kind of hard to play and it's kind of hard to make it clean to get to use all four fingers. That's a walk down on the D and the, and the A string. Is there Monday Night Football tonight or was that last night? What night is it? What day is this? Oh, it's 
Last night was Monday Night Football. I've been working so hard, I haven't even watched football. Can you believe that? trying to do. this lick from a Yes song. Uh, it was called Tempest Fugit off a of drama, which is a kind of a lesser known Yes album from 1980 that had Trevor Horn singing on it instead of John Anderson. But the lick was like this. It was like... It's hard to play. One, two, three, four. I can't do it. One, two, three, four. That's the end of it. Fuck, man. That's hard. So it's the concept is... Okay? And then down a whole step. stuff helps with your fingering right silly little exercises that that you know get you using all four of your fingers equally it's 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 a shame to me when guitar players only use three fingers man because uh this you got i use them use my thumb i got five digits going here all times and uh i wish i had more sometimes uh but anyway that's just a little thing to think about um There's no end to the to where you can voice chords. It it's just guitar is great like that. You you can you can just lay out your notes a million different ways. You're always finding new voicings. Uh, you know, break the chords apart. Take the chord recipe that makes the chord and ex extend it all across the fretboard. That's been my whole goal in life, right? <laughs> that video of those crazy guys playing that bluegrass I mean what a bunch of sweethearts they were in the dressing room next to us and uh, there's just a little black curtain there was separating the two rooms and we, we were lucky enough to be able to hear them warming up and playing that man those guys are badasses man um, the one guy Jake Workman hey Jake if you're watching he said he watches the show once in a while um but man, just so cool to watch those guys. You know, the bluegrass world is so foreign to me. It's like, it's like, I'm fascinated with it, you know, like the whole culture of it and uh, and all the stuff that goes with it, you know. The way those cats uh, self-mix when they play, you know, like this, the whole concept was to sound good around one microphone and the way they can, they can all self-mix 
and, and play dynamically to make each section of the song pop out. It's fascinating. Um, you know, the, the, the way that those cats strike the strings on an acoustic guitar is so different than the way rock guys play. You know, I, we've talked about this, I know, in the past on the show, but like when you don't have an amplifier and you don't have any, any kind of like real amplification, you've got to get all that stuff out of the instrument acoustically. It's amazing. You know, I think back to when I was a kid, you know, in my, in my bedroom with my first acoustic guitar, I thought it'd be cool to put like nines on it. It was like an ovation. And uh, like, I just wanted it to play like an electric, you know, but if somebody would have told me back in those days, nah, man, get you, get your real guitar, put some, some big heavy strings on it and learn how to make it sound like a piano. That's what, what I was missing. See, like, you know, I sounded like all the guys in the nineties on MTV unplugged when all those guys in those heavy metal bands were trying to play solos on their acoustic guitars. That always made me laugh. Um, Nothing more pitiful than a rock guy trying to play an acoustic solo. Oh, Lord. It's excruciating to watch. Um, but those cats, those bluegrass cats, know how to uh, just get the thing to project, right, and get those big round notes, you know, with just that pick and the way they're, and the way they're, they're holding it. You know, Brian Sutton teaches me a lot on sessions, you know, when we're working together. You know, like he points out things like, you know, I never even considered the fact that that when you hold the guitar up against your body, the acoustic, you're basically stopping the back of the guitar from resonating. You know, those guys, they they try to hold as little of the guitar against their body as possible, and they get they dra he drapes his arm over in a way so that everything is all connected. Where the whole uh, Brian talks about, you know, how the whole structure of the arm attached to the hand, the way it's striking the strings is all crucial. So I never thought about any of that shit when I was a kid. I mean, you know, it's just fascinating. Um, that guy playing that banjo last night in that video, man, it's just, it's just un unbelievable. Like, and the thing is, that, like, they can play that tempo and they can, without rushing, they can connect all those riffs together in like blazing speed, effortlessly, very relaxed, and they're not rushing. See, like a lot, the tendency of people like when they're trying to play something difficult is they're they're going through a you know a sixteenth note pattern, and they tendency get on top of the beat because they're just you know trying to desperately to get it out. The key to playing that kind of speed is to is to play it in the pocket and not rush it. And those guys are all great at like relaxing keeping their their arms and hands loose so that they can play at that speed, but it's all super relaxed, you know. Um, most guys, when they try to play fast, they tense up, they freak out mentally and physically, and, and it, you know, they end up, you know, choking the guitar, and they end up rushing. That's what ends up happening. But, uh, you know, these cats, they're the old bulls, man. They know how to do it. Walk down there. <laughs> All right, I'll never be able to upload 21 minutes so with my shitty internet. So why don't you, man, is there one of you young tech freak kids that lives in Nashville that knows how to come over to Larry's house and fucking make it nice in here with the 5G and whatever I need? <laughs> come on, man. I'll teach you a lesson or something. All right. See you. Night, wasn't it? The weather was just beautiful, man. That, that's a cool venue, right? It's always tough playing in Nashville because you know everybody like, they better get tired of the new <laughs> <laughs>
That night, that weather was perfect that night. It was so beautiful, man. That's a cool venue when it's when it's, the weather is like nice, man. Descent. Oh, 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 oh,